Hi everyone and welcome back to a brand new piercing video. So this one is really, really, really highly requested, like most of them are, <laughs> and that is how to get rid of keloids and hypertrobic scars. Hypertrobic, I think the technical name, I'm not sure how to say it, is this word, hypertrobic. <laughs> so what these basically are is a scar tissue that has formed inside of the piercing and then sort of like sp spills out on like the top and the bottom of the hole. Now mainly they do generally form in cartilage piercings. Now you can get them other places like your lip or your like surface piercings and stuff, but me personally, I've only ever had them and really seen them on like cartilage piercings like nose or the ears or anything like that. So there are many different reasons why you can get keloid bumps on your piercings. I'm gonna list off some of the causes and then some of the solutions afterwards. So, oh my gosh, what's wrong with me? Cause number one, pulling in your sleep. So this is actually one of the main reasons why I even got a keloid on my nose piercing. After I got it done, it's about maybe a month afterwards. Um, I rolled over in my sleep and I have a pillow that has like loads of like tassels and things on it. I rolled onto it when I was asleep. And then as I sort of moved away, the nose piercing got caught in the fibers and just pulled it downwards. When I woke up in the morning, it was really, really painful. And then that evening I had like a bump on it and I was like, for God's sake, for good, no, like why does it have to happen to me? And obviously during my whole time of getting piercings, I've got quite a few now that, you know, when I was younger and things, I would always catch them like when I was changing my clothes and I'm not used to it. And you can cause yourself like micro tears inside your cartilage. So I will definitely advise if you do have a new piercing, please try your hardest not to catch it. Be so careful changing your clothing. If you're not used to a piercing in a certain area, pay so much more attention to that area. Try not to sleep on that side. I know you roll over naturally in your sleep anyway, so it's kind of avoidable sometimes, but try, 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 try your hardest not to like roll onto it or sleep onto it. Just like, just, just, just like, yeah. Course number two is not leaving it alone. Oh my God. Gosh, I get it. When you have a piercing, it's so, so like sort of easy just to play with it and be like, oh, it's cool, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it's like painful, blah, 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 blah. It hinders the healing process so much and it can cause you to have scar tissue inside. So the best way to kind of explain this one is think of it like this. You fall over, you graze your arm, and your body naturally produces a scab over it to protect the, like, the wound and to help it heal. Now, if you keep ripping that scab off constantly, eventually it's gonna like form like scar tissue and that's it. And you're gonna get scar tissue there. Think of it like your hole, your pier, your hole, your, <laughs> just disgusting. Inside the piercing where the pier, like the, the tube, the, the hole, like the inside of the hole is forming a scab to protect the hole to help it heal. Now, when you're twisting it and you're pulling it, you're ripping that scab open constantly. You're ripping it open and open and open. And then eventually your body's gonna be like, clearly this is enough. So it got, starts to form scar tissue. And then again, it swells on the inside of the outside of the piercing because there's not really any, like, anywhere for this to go. And so you're left with a big keloid bump. No, no, trot along bitch. At the time when they're healing, just leave them alone. Like don't muck around with them. Cause number three is bad body piercer. Dun, dun, dun. <gasps> So, some people are not very good piercers. Some people are really not qualified. Unfortunately, there are some bad piercers out there, especially like some people just do piercings at home. Like some people like don't know what they're doing and they're like, I'm gonna pierce my own ear and then they go to do it. And then before you know it, the ears are swollen and inflamed. Make sure that you are going to someone that is like, you know, highly established, good re good reputation. You know, ask ask your friends, like, you know, ask about where they go and have you got any like good like examples or go, to, go on the internet and look at some like reviews of places. Like really do your research about where you're getting piercings done. If they might pierce at a wrong angle and then the body's like, what the hell is this? And why is it putting pressure on this part of my body? This is exactly why I had a horror story with my top helix here, which is one of the ones that I have real problems with now trying to heal it. And it's been eight years. I was almost about eight years now and it's still not healed completely. Like it's so frustrating that when I got my industrial done, for anyone who doesn't know, I did a video about this a long time ago, so I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but I had an industrial piercing done here. The piercing was done too close inwards on the ear, which ultimately meant my ear was being kind of bent out of shape in order to have this scaffold bar in there. I should have not been allowed to have one. There was not enough space there to put it in, but she did it anyway. And me being me, I like I was like, well, they know what they're doing, it's fine. Because I didn't really research that much about it, the my inside of my ear started growing over the scaffold bar because it was too far in and it was like de almost deforming my ear. Please do your research, because unfortunately some people just aren't good at <laughs> aren't good at body piercing. Cause number four is allergies. So if you keep having problems with piercings, like it's not just one piercing that's giving you problems, like a lot of them are. I would maybe suggest that you do have an allergy to the certain material that the bar is made out of. I would say go back to your piercer and just ask them, you know, what other kind of bars could we use that could potentially like change it. If it's still happening, I would say go to your 
your doctor. And again, I'm not too sure what the process would be of knowing what allergy you might have, but they will be able to give you more of an insight. And maybe that is why you're having problems a lot of the time, because your body just doesn't like the kind of material that it is um, in. My anti tragus piercing I got in 2009. And when I first got it done, it was a really, really hard one to get done that, you know, it's such a thick bit of cartilage. And you know, when the piercer did it, um, it really took her a long time to get it through. And I think that might've been one of the reasons why I've had a bit of problems with it, because it is at a slight angle. It's not completely straight. It's ever so slightly arched up. And I think that could be why I was having problems. Um, I have recently changed it into a flat barbell, like a, like a straight barbell rather than a curved one. I did have like a banana, what they called it, a curved barbell in there. Um, and I think that was putting too much pressure in it. I know that if I ever put a hoop in it, my ear is just like, nope, 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 and a massive keloid will form on them. So some of the ways you can combat them is, oh my gosh, so the best way that I always find that really helps me if any of them sort of flare up is I use salt soaks. Now, get like a little cup, like a little mug and put like a pinch of like salt inside of it. This is obviously what I do. Don't come for me if it's too much for you. Like, I'm, please don't, I, I won't, I'll, be, I'll cut you. So then put some boiling water on, like into the cup and then let that cool down, obviously. Let it cool down um, and then use a cotton bud or a cotton swab, cotton swab or a Q-tip, whatever. Just go around the outside of the piercing and then I use cotton wool and I just submerge the cotton wool inside the water Like inside the salt water and then wrap it around the piercing and then I go to sleep And then I wake up in the morning take it off have a shower and then like over time like over say a week or so It generally does reduce the size of the keloid for me again might not work for you This is just what works for me also tea tree oil can be a lifesaver So with the cotton like a cotton swab again I'd put a tiny bit of tea tree oil on top like on top of the cotton swab and then after I've cleaned it out with some salt water, I then just put the bit of tea tree oil on the actual bump itself. Try not to get it inside the hole because it can be like quite, because like, it's quite a strong substance. So um, it can irritate inside the hole, but kind of just get it on the outside of the keloid on each side or whatever. Go to sleep when you wake up, have a shower and it does work every time. The same way when it comes to um, the salt water, like eventually they will lower like the size of them and they can get rid of them. So they're like the two main ways that you can um, combat keloids. I would always advise if you have had them for a long time and they don't go away, please do please just go back to your piercer and have a conversation with them because they're gonna obviously be able to give you better advice than I will. If you've got like a nipple piercing, if you put some of the salt water into a shot glass and you can just sort of hold it over it, um, that can help it really well. Again, if you have any piercings that you can sort of submerge by putting your entire ear inside salt water and leaving there for a few minutes, then obviously that's great. But like, if you have a nose piercing, you can't really submerge your nose in water for a long time because you can't really breathe. So you, to me, cotton wool and stuff will be a better one just to put around the piercing. So I really hope this video has been informational for some of you who might need to like help with your keloids and things. Um, so maybe this might help you. If it doesn't, then I would always say go back to your piercer and have a conversation with them. Please make sure you hit the like button because it does really help me out. There's a subscribe button down below. Subscribe, I do videos every single week regarding a whole variety of topics. I also have new merchandise out, which is really cool. So if you'd like to get some merchandise, i put a little button here that you can go click and buy like a Trot Along Bitch t-shirt or a Rolly t-shirt is amazing. And some other videos and subscribe and I love you and thumbs up and I adore you. Oh my God, and comment and uh, yeah, bye. <laughs>